change, and everything is change, nothing can be held on to. To the degree that you go with a stream, you see, you are still. You're flowing with it. But to the degree you resist the stream, then you notice that the current is rushing past you and fighting with you. So swim with it. Go with it. And you're there. You're at rest. And this is, of course, particularly true when it comes to those moments when life really seems to be going to take us away. And the stream of change is going to swallow us completely. The moment of death. And we think, oh, oh, this is it. This is the end. And so at death we withdraw. Say, no, 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 not that. Not, not, not yet, please. But actually, the whole problem is uh, that there really is no other problem for human beings than to go over that waterfall when it comes. Just as you go over any other waterfall, just as you go on from day to day, just as you go to sleep at night, be absolutely willing to die. Now, I'm not preaching. I'm not saying you ought to be willing to die and that you should um, muscle up your courage and somehow put on a good front when the, when the terrible thing comes. That's not the idea at all. The point is that you can only die well if you understand this system of waves. If you understand that your disappearance as the form in which you think you are you, your disappearance as this particular organism, is simply seasonal. That uh, you are just as much the dark space beyond death as you are the light interval called life. These are just two sides of you because you is the total wave. See, you can't have half a wave. Nobody ever saw waves which just had crests, no troughs. So you can't have half a human being who is born but doesn't die. Half a thing. That would be only half a thing. So the, the man who died in the ring was a temple fight. Oh. It was Route 2. Well, me, me, Before I Lumpini? Was a bit, I, this was when he was 17. This was like one of his first fights. Oh. How, how are you, Tarai? How are you, Tarai? How are you, The guy was 35. He died oh. in the ring. Oh. How are you, Tarai? How are you, มันเนี่ยหมอไม่อยู่ที่จะทําด้วยเพราะอะไรมันทําไม่ได้ก็ก็ไม่ได้ไปมุมมันเยอะใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่
แล้วทำแมวแบบนี้อ่ะมันสมัครชกIt's more that memory is a dynamic system, not a storage system. It's a repetition of rhythms. And uh, these rhythms are all part and parcel of the ongoing flow of present experience. In other words, first of all, how do you distinguish between something known now and a memory? Actually, you don't know anything at all until you remember it. Because if something happens that is purely instantaneous, if a light flashes, or uh, to be more accurate, if there is a flash lasting only one millionth of a second, you probably wouldn't really experience it because it wouldn't give you enough time to remember it we say in customary speech well it has to make an impression so in a way all present knowledge is memory because you look at something and uh, for a while the rods and cones in your retina respond to that and they go, they do their stuff, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. It's all vibration. And so as, as you look at things, 
they set up a series of echoes in your brain. And these echoes keep reverberating because the brain is very complicated. First of all, everything you know is remembered. But there is a way in which we distinguish between seeing somebody here now and the memory of having seen somebody else who is not here now but whom you did see in the past and you know perfectly well when you remember that other person's face it's not an experience of the person being here. How is this? Because memory signals have a different cue attached to them than present time signals. They come on a different kind of vibration. Sometimes, however, the wiring gets mixed up and present experiences come to us with a memory cue attached to them. And then we have what is called a déjà vu experience. We are quite sure we've experienced this thing before. But the problem is that we don't see, don't ordinarily recognize, is that although memory is a series of signals with a special kind of cue attached to them so that we don't confuse them with present experience, they are actually all part of the same thing as present experience. They are all part of this constantly flowing life process and there is no separate witness standing aside from the process, watching it go by. You're all involved in it. Now, accepting that, you see, going with that, although at first it sounds like the knell of doom, is if you don't clutch it anymore. Splendid. That's why I said the death should be an occasion for a great celebration that people should say happy death to you uh, and always uh, surround death with joyous rites because this is the opportunity for the greatest of all experiences when you can finally let go because you know there's nothing else to do.
Be in order. Uh, 2517. Yeah. Four years. Actually, a little more. Four years. Bandit. Bandit is famous, he's in the book also. Wow. It's incredible. They are delivered, they are liberated by the very fact of not being able to stop changing. You can't hang on to yourself. You don't have to try not to hang on to yourself. It can't be done, and that is salvation. Memento mori, be mindful of death. Gurdjieff says in uh, one of his books, that the most important thing for anyone to realize is that you and all you, every person you see, will soon be dead. See, it sounds so gloomy to us because we have devised a culture fundamentally resisting death. 